Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel for yet another COVID-19 update. There's been a lot of discussion about possible treatment options for COVID, but as of late, we've had a lot of studies discussing different potential pharmacological interventions for not only the treatment, but also the prevention of COVID-19. One of these medications includes the infamous ivermectin. I did a recent video about ivermectin with its use in treating COVID-19, but actually ended up taking the video down because the overall validity of the two studies that were being presented turned out to be subpar at best. The last thing I want to do on this channel is spread false information because that is not what I nor this channel is all about. Again, for those of you who are new to the channel, the goal here is to dive into the literature, whether that's in health or wellness topics, going into the science of what is actually legit and then presenting that information as objectively as I can. So I'm excited to talk about ivermectin in light of this new study as it is published in the New England Journal of Medicine. But before we dive into that study today, I want to give a quick summary about what the heck ivermectin even is. Ivermectin was discovered way back when in the year 1976 and was actually first used in veterinary medicine in order to prevent parasitic infections. It was first approved for human use in 1987 and it is continually used for parasitic infections today. It works in a myriad of mechanisms in order to kill the little parasitic critters, which still isn't fully understood. Two gentlemen by the name of Satoshi Omura and William Campbell actually won a Nobel Prize in medicine for their discovery of ivermectin in the field of parasitology in 2015. Ivermectin is not a commonly prescribed medication, but it is cheap, costing about $20 to $30 for a full medical treatment without insurance. Now that we know a little bit of background knowledge about ivermectin, let's dive in and take a look at what this study has to reveal. So I've actually talked about this specific study in the past when I did a video discussing fluvoxamine, which is an old antidepressant that was actually found to reduce overall hospitalization rates by 30%. If you want to check out this video specifically, you can click on it here in the top corner as well as in the description below or if you just want to wait until the end of the video, it will be there. So the main question that was asked in this trial was does taking ivermectin actually reduce your overall chances of going to the hospital after being tested positive for COVID. The trial was held in Brazil and it's actually performed in a little bit of a different way than traditional trials are. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the trial itself as it is a bit confusing. And I think sort of besides the point of what the data actually shows us. But if you want further details about the trial, check out the video done over at MedCram and I will link it in the description below if you're interested. Essentially, there were 1,358 people in enrolled in this study with 679 individuals taking the placebo and 679 individuals taking ivermectin. In order to be actually eligible to receive ivermectin, the individuals had to have COVID-19 symptoms for at least seven days and at least one other risk factor for disease progression. There was actually really good randomization done for all individuals in this trial, and the results were reported for the individuals taking the medical intervention, which was taking ivermectin at 400 micrograms per kilogram for three total days. The results was that there was no statistically significant difference in taking ivermectin than if an individual took the placebo. AKA, there was no difference in overall reduction of hospitalization after having COVID for seven days, whether you were taking a sugar pill or actually taking ivermectin. Now there's a couple of important things to frame in this discussion. In terms of the actual dose of ivermectin, this is typically on the higher end of what we would normally see if we were to give out ivermectin for a parasitic infection. And in the midst of this trial, fluvoxamine was shown to have a 30% reduction in overall hospitalization rates. I'm definitely interested in seeing more data on ivermectin in the future, because as many of you know, there's been conflicting evidence about ivermectin since the start of this pandemic. If you guys know of any reputable sources or articles, feel free to link them down in the comments. As always, everyone, make sure you follow along for future COVID updates as things in COVID land continually change every single day. Thanks for sticking with me. And as always, I will see you all on the next one.